Inflation is probably a bigger threat now than it's ever been. And therefore, it's a even bigger factor in determining everything that we do and ultimately uh, what the rewards are going to be or the returns from your investments. And, and the reason I think that inflation is a bigger problem now than it's, it's been in the past is because of the fiscal predicament that most of the major governments have you know, put themselves in. And the fact that all politicians, unfortunately, and this is a, a, a fatal flaw in democracy, is that politicians, first and foremost, care about themselves and their own political career and their own reelection. That's what they do for a living. They are career politicians. And so, you know, like anybody else, you know, they're 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 you know concerned about perpetuating their career. And most people who are in politics, they really enjoy it. I mean, they they they, they like all the perks that come with it. Uh, you know, you get a lot of uh, you know respect if you're you know kind of United States, you're a congressman, you're a senator. Uh, you know, it, it, it's it's a it's a career that a lot of people would would aspire to. And once you get there, you know, once you get to Washington, and I'm sure this is true in you know every you know country in Europe and all around the world that you know. You, you like it, right? You like the lifestyle. You like the prestige that comes with being a government official. So you want to stay there, right? Well, how do you stay in office? Well, you got to keep getting elected. You know, in the United States, you know, we get elections every two years, right? So politicians are are very concerned about, you know, the polls, and they're constantly got their finger in the air, seeing where the winds are blowing, and. They don't want to say anything or do anything that might jeopardize their reelection. And of course, one of the most important things that you need to get reelected is you need a lot of money. You need to spend money on advertising, on television, which is expensive. And so you tend to cater to donors, um, whether it's a corporation or a, 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 you know a union, anyone that can provide a lot of money. Uh, you need to do things that are in their interest. And so what is usually sacrificed by these politicians is the national interest. Doing what's right for the country is secondary to doing what's right for themselves. And also, in order to be successful as a politician, you have to be a really good liar. And that's probably why a lot of lawyers go into politics, because lawyers, you know, they're paid to lie. I mean, you have to argue your client's case, even if you know they're wrong, right? And you have to put on a defense or whatever it is. And, and so lawyers are generally pretty good liars. And so they, 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 be, they become politicians. Because if you're honest and you tell the truth, you're not going to have a career in politics. You're, you're just not going to, even if you manage to get elected telling the truth, you're not going to stay in office telling the truth. So you got to lie. So here's the situation. So you've had decades of politicians buying their re-election by promising voters something for nothing. Because unfortunately, that's what a lot of voters want. They want something from the government. And it's even worse when it comes to trying to take away something. Like if you want to cut a program spending, that's even worse. Because once a voter has something, nobody wants to take it away. In fact, even some of the politicians, let's say Republicans in the United States that might have opposed certain government welfare type programs, you know, uh, when they started, once they're in place, even those people won't vote to take them away. That's how, how a danger it is. So the situation is you've had all these politicians who have promised so much stuff that the taxpayers can't deliver. And of course, when politicians want to give voters something, they don't want them to pay for it. So they want to spend money, but they don't want to raise taxes because Governments don't have any money. They only have the money they take. They have to take money from the people in order to give money back to the people. And, and so if the government's taking your money, that you don't like. So they could just create paper money out of thin air, right? They could just ma manufacture it digitally, and, and there it is. That enables governments to spend without collecting taxes. They run these large deficits, and they're able to print the difference and 
hand out bad money so they can give people money without also taking the money away. And now they don't mind taking money away from rich people because you know there's not as many of those, right? So they don't lose as many votes. Although certain rich people can uh, donate a lot to their campaigns, which often you know uh, prevents the taxes from from getting too high. Inflation is really just another tax because governments create inflation, and inflation is also probably one of the most misunderstood words in the English language, and deliberately so. I think governments around the world kind of led the campaign to redefine inflation. So if you go back to the origin of the word, and if you if you have a dictionary, even from the 1980s, a Webster's Dictionary, you'll get the real definition of inflation. So inflation is an expansion of the money supply. That's all it is. Deflation is a contraction of the money supply. So if you even think about the word inflate, inflate is to expand, like a balloon. If you if you fill a balloon with air, it expands. So with inflation, what's being expanded is the money supply. And who expands the money supply? Governments. You know, or they they do it generally now through a central bank, but it's the central banks of these governments that are expanding the money supply. Now, when you expand the money supply, you have more money. Well, if you have more money, but you don't have more stuff to buy, well, the price of everything goes up. That's just basic economic supply and demand. The more money there is, the less each individual monetary unit is worth. And now prices go up. Now, what governments have done is they've said, price is going up, that's inflation. No, it's not. That is the consequence of inflation. Because prices don't expand, prices go up and down as a result of inflation. Now, what happens is sometimes prices don't go up, but you still have inflation. And that's because without that inflation, prices would have gone down. And if prices don't go down because government creates inflation, that still represents a loss to the people because they lost the benefit of lower prices. Because in capitalism, the tendency of capitalism is to reduce prices. That's why it's so good, because you keep coming up with better ways of producing, more efficient ways, economies of scale. If you look at the CPI, for example, in the United States in, in, in 1800, and then you look at the same CPI in 1900, and they have the data, prices were cut in half. You had a 100-year period where you had deflation or, you know, the money, or prices falling for 100 years. Uh, and that was a good thing. You know, all the politicians now tell us that we need prices to go up, that we must have inflation, you know, the way they define it, of 2% a year. Why? Why do prices have to go up every year? Why can't they go down every year? Isn't that better if stuff gets cheaper? You know, if the cost of living goes down? Of course it is. But these politicians are trying to sell this lie to the public that rising prices are somehow necessary for prosperity. Prices individually will go up and down based on the supply and demand. But if the price of one thing goes up, it's gonna necessitate the price of something else to go down. Uh, and so the general level of prices won't change. Uh, it's only when you have the expansion of the money supply that the price of everything goes up because the value of money is going down. And so now you need more money to, to buy stuff. But the problem now is because these governments have run such enormous deficits uh, and it you know inflated the, you know the housing bubble that popped in 2008 in the US and then uh, a decade or more of massive deficit spending, quantitative easing programs. And by the way, quantitative easing is inflation. They basically did, you know taken inflation and put a nice sounding name to it because quantitative easing, is printing money and buying government bonds. That, that's inflation. But if the politician said, our policy is inflation, you know, the public doesn't like that. So they said, no, we're, we're doing quantitative easing. And somehow that sounds you know, more palatable than inflation. But they've created so much. And, and for years and years, these central bankers were telling us that inflation is too low. We don't have enough inflation because it's not 2%. And again, we don't need prices to go up. You know, and the reason they say that price, prices have to go up is they claim that we won't buy stuff. That if we think prices are gonna go down, 
will just hold off on buying indefinitely, waiting for a cheaper price, and the economy is going to collapse. And that's a bunch of BS because you buy things when you need them and when you can afford them. I mean, if, if that was true, nobody would own a cell phone, nobody would own a laptop computer, nobody would have a, a television set, because all those things get cheaper every year, yet we keep buying them. So it's nonsense that we won't buy if prices going down. In fact, prices going down create demand. If you can't afford something, the way to, to buy it is for the price to go down, and then you can afford it, and then you buy it. But they've created so much inflation when they said it was too low, that now it's exploded, right? You've got double digit inflation or high single digit inflation pretty much in all the vast economies of the world. And no government anywhere in the world is willing to actually do what it takes to reduce inflation because A, they have to accept responsibility for creating it. And then B, they have to sig significantly reduce government spending and or raise taxes on, on middle-class uh, voters, and neither of those choices are politically expedient. And so politicians now are under more pressure than ever to continue to finance their spending through inflation. So the inflation tax is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger uh, every year. And the reason that that's such a problem is it's really the worst possible tax because it impacts the people the most who could afford it the least. It's the middle class, the working poor, uh, and the retirees who are living off of fixed income. Uh, they end up paying the inflation tax the most. Uh, they have some savings, they have a pension, they have an annuity, a cash value, and insurance policies. All this stuff gets uh, destroyed. Wealthier people who tend to own assets and who have more good debt, right? Bad debt is consumer debt. You go out and you borrow money and you, and you spend it. You buy a consumer good, you buy a TV with your credit card and that's bad debt. Or you take a vacation and you pay for it on a credit card. But if you buy an asset, particularly an income producing asset, a piece of property, uh, if you a business, a company stock, if you borrow money and you buy an asset and that asset is appreciating and generating income, Inflation is your friend. Inflation helps you out because it wipes out the value of your debt and you still have the asset. So wealthy people, very wealthy people, if they invest the right way, will benefit from inflation. Whereas ordinary people are gonna get hurt.